In the summer of 2018, mysterious black masks began appearing on advertisements all over the United States accompanied by Base64 encoded imagery, source code, and QR codes. The puzzling guerrilla marketing tactic left some people curious and they wanted to know more. Upon further investigation, they found themselves in the midst of a scavenger hunt that was partially digital and partially in the material world. As players began engaging with the challenge, they were led to the discovery of a mysterious musical artist known as Death Pact released their first single just two days after the launch of their marketing campaign, and it was a dark house track called Danger. The, darkest, the, danger. the track was extremely well produced, and their marketing and branding were also top notch and professional. Due to all of this, some people believe that Death Pact was a side project of a well established artist, but no one knew who it might be. However, just a few weeks later, the mystery began to grow even bigger when Death Pact made an appearance on Rez's sophomore album, A Certain Kind of Magic. Rez collaborated with Death Pact on her track called Life and Death. It's one of the more standout singles on the album due to its abrasive industrial sound design, and much of that can likely be attributed to Death Pact. Life and with Death Pact's appearance on the album, fans were left with even more questions. Could Death Pact be Rez's side project? Could they actually just be a completely new artist and Rez just really likes their sound so she wanted to collaborate? Could Death Pact be the side project of a well-established big name artist? Yeah. There were so many questions. Over the course of the next two months, two more Death Pack singles were dropped, First Interference and Piston. During that time, the scavenger hunt continued with new fans working in collaboration to solve the puzzle. All of their combined effort culminated with the discovery of a padlock hidden in an undisclosed location within Los Angeles. It contained a single USB drive called Death Drop 1. The USB was loaded with an unreleased Death Pact EP called Cypher 1, as well as an unreleased track called Earwig. The discovery of the USB drive triggered the official release of the Cypher 1 EP, which came out in September of 2018. The EP contained a total of five tracks, and none of which were collaborations. Shortly after the release of Cypher 1, a Discord server called Death Chord was launched. It became a gathering place for anyone interested in the Death Pact enigma and unraveling the mystery. The community began to work together to decipher hidden messages in a photo that Death Pact had shared to social media. This marked the beginning of the hunt for Death Drop 2. The hunt triggered the release of two more singles, Formality and End of Time. Additionally, the hunt triggered the release of a Death Pact remix of Odessa's song Loyal, the first ever Death Pact remix. The second lockbox was finally tracked down in New York City, and it also contained a USB drive, just like the first Death Drop. The drive had an unreleased track on it called Backbone, which was later released on Death Pack's website alongside two other unreleased tracks, Busker and Earwig, but they were only available for a few hours. The USB also contained the Cypher 2 EP, which was released following the discovery of the second Death Drop. At this point, it was clear that Death Pact was far more than just a masked producer. It was a full-blown augmented reality game that fused the digital world with the material. The hunt for the third Death Drop ensued in 2019, taking fans months to complete. During the hunt, a new Death Pack single was released on Deadbeats, a collaboration with 1788L on the track Malfunct. For those that don't know, Dead Beats is a bass music label that was created by Zed's Dead. This was an interesting release for Death Pact fans as it showed us another artist who Death Pact is connected to in some capacity, but it also connected Death Pact to a record label. A month later, the third Death Drop was completed and it revealed two new unreleased tracks called Eclipse and Eternity Part 1, as well as a mysterious recording labeled Delightful Interception. The following day, a two-track Death Pact EP was released on Dead Mouse's record label, Mousetrap. It contained the tracks Point of Departure and Dioxide. At this point, the mystery of Death Pact was bigger than ever. I mean, who releases on both Dead Beats and Mousetrap? They're dramatically different labels with totally different sounds. On top of that, the project was less than a year old and there were already multiple Death Pact tracks that will likely never see an official release, which is commonly a staple of many artists with hyper-enthusiastic fan bases. The project was getting bigger, and consequently, so was the mystery. 
Upon the completion of the third death drop, Death Pact's grip on the material world had grown stronger. In May of 2019, Death Pact emerged farther into the real world when they took over Diplo's revolution on Sirius XM and fans got to hear the first ever Death Pact DJ set. Just two months later, Death Pact was featured on another Res collab, this time with the track Kiss of Death. Stop. It was certainly peculiar that Rez had two collabs with Death Pact in the first year of the project, but that would soon become old news. Death Pact materialized in our world for the first time in August of 2019 at Shambhala Music Festival, giving their first ever live performance. The set made waves across the internet, and now more people than ever had their eyes on Death Pact. <laughs> Weeks after the performance, another Death Drop was made called Death Drop 3.5. This drop was intended to be found at Shambhala, but due to unforeseen circumstances, it was lost. However, the hunt still continued. The users who were able to crack the code received Death Drop 3.5 world debut t-shirts in the mail. Not much later, a new mystery appeared in Death Chord. It was a GIF of a phone number, and when a user ran the image through a slow scan TV decoder, a music festival lineup was revealed. The lineup was for a new digital music festival called Earwig, which was named after the unreleased Death Pack track. Over the following year, between 2019 and 2020, a total of three Earwig festivals occurred, each time raising money for an organization looking to make positive change in the music industry. Death Pact played a set for the second Earwig festival in 2020, but not the first or third. At the end of 2019, Death Pact was revealed to be a last minute addition to the Snow Globe Music Festival lineup, marking their second ever materialization. They were later booked to play Electric Forest in 2020, but the festival was ultimately canceled due to COVID-19. Just before Snow Globe, a new scavenger hunt was revealed. A time has come to make a decision. Are we in this thing alone, or are we in it? Death Pact had left clues in some of their merch that would be sold at Snow Globe. During their set at Snow Globe, they played a vocal sample that says, Death Chord, we were lost, but now we are found. This gave someone in the crowd the idea to check the lost and found, and when they did so, they were given a golden Death Pact mask that was left there by Death Pact. A little over a week after their Snow Globe performance, Death Pact hacked Deadbeat's radio, showing further ties to the label. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. You're traveling through another dimension of not only sight and sound, but of death. You are now death hack. Just five days after the hack, Deadbeats released their fourth label compilation album called We Are Deadbeats Volume 4. The compilation contained a Zed's Dead and Death Pact collab called Ether. At the very end of the song, a strange recording says, Death Pact is Zed's Dead. Death. <laughs> It seemed anticlimactic for Death Pact to reveal themselves so plainly, not to mention being wildly off-brand. But was it that simple? Is Death Pact really Zed's dead? Or was this another clue, or perhaps something to throw people off track? A few months later, Death Pact posted a video on Twitter that sent fans on yet another scavenger hunt. The key to the atom secrets was first given to the world in 1905 when the genius Albert Einstein defined the relation between all matter and energy and evolved his revolutionary theory of special relativity. This time, it led to the discovery that Death Pact would be playing a set at Meow Wolf Denver for their Dark Palace Music Festival. Unfortunately, that set was also canceled due to COVID-19. However, Death Pact did play a set later that year for the virtual festival called Digital Mirage. Things began to ramp back up in 2021 when Death Pact began posting various videos on social media that flashed strange symbols across the screen. Fans discovered that the symbols were semaphore flag code, and when deciphered, it revealed the name of four artists, Reaper, Claude Von Stroke, Code Orange, and Closey. 
fans realized that these artists had been selected to remix unreleased Death Pack songs and one remix was released every day for four days. This was only the first step though, as it was a part of the most complex death drop ever up to that point. As the hunt continued, four more remixes were released. Beekla, Opio, Death Heaven, and Jean-Michel Jar. Two days after the release of the final remix, a Death Pact vinyl was put up for sale on Death Pact's website. As fans began receiving their vinyls in the mail, they realized that not everyone got the same vinyl. Some were black and some were white, and they contained different cryptograms on the back. Both versions of the vinyl included a center label with MC Escher's Angels and Demons with the colors inverted. While the black and white vinyls looked different, the audio on them was the same. The cryptograms on the vinyl led fans further into the death drop rabbit hole, ultimately triggering the release of the 4-track Split Personality EP, followed by Split Personality Part 2, which contained another 4-tracks. A few months later, Rez and Death Pact were back with their third collaboration, a track called Chemical Bond. The song landed a placement in a MacBook Pro commercial and became a consistent staple in both Rez and Death Pact's live shows. Speaking of live shows, in October of 2021, Death Pact materialized for a performance at Sewanee Halloween, their first live performance since Snowglow back in 2019. The day of the performance, a new Death Drop appeared. Death Drop 4.0. This time it was another USB drive hidden in a lockbox, and the drive contained two songs, an unreleased Death Pact original, as well as a Death Pact remix of Elenium. A few weeks later, Death Pact posted another cryptic video to social media, but this time it was a joint post with fellow producer Blank. The message was quickly deciphered by fans, which triggered the release of a new Death Pact and Blank collab called Mitosis. Following the release, Death Pact played two more shows to cap off 2021. First they played Holy Ship, and then they played a show in Chicago for the Deadbeats tour. 2022 shaped up to be Death Pack's biggest year ever on the live front. They kicked off the year with a set at Okeechobee Music Festival, followed by Coachella, Electric Forest, a return to Shambhala, and a few other sets. Now I want to talk about that Shambhala set for a second. Up to that point, Death Pack was just one person, right? At least only one person was playing on stage, that much we actually knew. But during their Shambhala set, Death Pact underwent a division sequence, and a second Death Pact appeared. Fans went wild with new theories saying Death Pact could be Daft Punk or Odessa. And there might actually be some merit to one of those theories, but you're gonna have to watch my Death Pact Part 2 video to find out more. In September of 2022, Death Pact released a new track called Brutalism Reprise. It's a collaboration with Jean-Michel Jarre who had done a remix for Death Pact the previous year. It's evident that Death Pact has some sort of relationship with Jean-Michel Jarre and it's one of the most perplexing aspects of the project. If you listen to Jean-Michel Jarre's music, you'll quickly realize that it sounds nothing like Death Pact's signature sound, so it's odd that they decided to collaborate. Brutalism Reprise, as well as the Split Personality remix that Jean-Michel did, sound absolutely nothing like any other Death Pack track or remix. I would even dare to say that they're borderline off-brand. Could that relationship hold the key to unveiling the identity of Death Pact? Maybe, maybe not, but I do find it to be one of the most peculiar aspects of the project. Anyways, a week after the release of Brutalism Reprise, Death Pact got to play at Red Rocks as support for Closey. A month later, on November 4th, Death Pact had their first ever solo headline show in Los Angeles. Except, that wasn't the only show taking place that night. Death Pact played headline shows in Los Angeles, New York City, Vancouver, and Orlando all in the same night. So we thought Death Pact was just one person, but later found out it's two, 
but now it's four? How many freaking death packs are there? Just days before those four shows took place, Death Pact released a two-track EP called Midheaven Opus 1. A month later, Midheaven Opus 2 was released, which also contained two tracks. It was followed by two more two-track EPs, Midheaven Opus 3 and 4, which were released in January and February of 2023. Together, these four EPs combine into one eight-track album. Now, just a few days before the release of the final leg of the project, Midheaven Opus 4, Death Pact posted a video on social media that contained a tablet with symbols on it in the bottom right of the video. The symbols led Death Pact fans on another wild goose chase, with one of them ultimately finding a lockbox with a USB drive in Chicago. The drive contained a flyer for a Chicago Death Pact show as well as a video with coordinates for the next Death Drop location. The lockbox also contained contact information for an employee at the venue so that the finder could contact them to get free tickets to the show. Five more lockboxes were later found, all with the same contents but for their respective city. The other five cities were Charlotte, Denver, San Francisco, Seattle, and Philadelphia. Those six shows took place in April and May of this year, and Death Pact hasn't released any new music since Midheaven Opus 4. All of this has led us to the most recent death drop. It all started on May 22nd when Death Pack shared this image on Instagram. It appears to be a billboard, which was later found by fans on Interstate 15 in North Las Vegas. The users then called the Death Pact phone number and they received a text with a link to a website that showed a countdown to May 29th, 2023 at 13 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Four days later, when Death Pact was playing at Lightning in a Bottle, they showed text on their visual board that read 72923, Los Angeles, City of Angels, alongside the Death Pact phone number. We now know that it was an announcement for their show at the Fonda Theater in Los Angeles, which will take place in about a week if you're watching this video when it was first posted. Death Pact is arguably the most interesting electronic artist to emerge in the past five years and maybe well beyond that. The whole project is meticulously planned and perfectly executed on a scale that I've never seen done before. To be able to do everything that Death Pact has done would require a lot of money, which is something a brand new artist probably doesn't have a lot of. Additionally, their sound design and mixes are top tier professional quality, and I mean top, top tier, like Space Laces, Dead Mouse, and Skrillex top tier. It's highly unlikely that a newer artist would have that level of production and engineering prowess unless they were honing their craft in private for like 15 or 20 years. So having said that, it's very likely that Death Pact is the side project of an already well-established artist or perhaps a collective of well-established artists. I've seen many interesting theories on the internet of who might be behind the mask, and I also have theories of my own, which is why for my next video, I'll be doing a deep dive into who Death Pact might be. I'll explore various theories and cross-reference them with as much information as possible to see if they can actually pass as a legitimate possibility. We'll be taking a look at every artist that has a tangible connection to the Death Pact project, and you might actually be surprised by some of the artists that have a lesser-known connection to Death Pact. I was definitely taken aback by some of the ones that I learned about during my research. If you want to dive deeper into Death Pact with me, stay tuned to my channel for when I post Unmasking Death Pact Behind the Mask Part 2. And if this video is more than a week old, then I already posted it and you can go ahead and watch it right now.